Hello and welcome to Let's Learn C++ Lesson 1.5. Today I'm going to teach you about the basics of math. I freaking love math. Math is the best. Adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, exponents, order of operations, modulus. Makes me all happy inside. But before I start, there is one vocab word I want you to know. It's operator. An operator is a symbol or a character that is used in programming to perform some kind of task. There are many operators. You've already learned a few of them already. Uh, each one has its own special use that is used in different situations. I'm going to teach you a few extras today. So, to demonstrate the wonders of math, I've created a small, simple program. We've created three integers, value 1, value 2, and value 3. Now, I've set value 1 equal to 3. I've set value 2 equal to 6. And then I've set value 3 equal to value 1 plus value 2. Go figure. What do you think value 3 is going to be? If value 1 is 3 and value 2 is 6, what do you think value 3 is going to be? 3 plus 6 is 9. So which value 3 should be 9 when it outputs. Let's find out if it actually is. Bada boom, bada bing. There you go. Value 3 is 9. So that's how you use addition. Now what about subtraction? Subtraction, all I got to do is change it to a minus sign. 3 minus 6, what do you think it's going to be? Mm -hmm. Take a guess. You were right. Negative 3. Multiplication and division. Multiplication is just an asterisk. And division is a slash. I'm not really sure if it's a backslash or a forward slash. I think it's a forward slash. It's the one that starts in the left, bottom left and goes to the top right. The one next to my shift key above control. So, that, those are the four basic operators. Now, let me pull out another uh, program I have here. I wrote this one a while back. Just especially for you guys. Look at that, it's all unformatted and everything. There we go. Alright. So we have two integers. Oh, why am I running this? Cancel. Alright, we have two integers, value 1 and value 2. And we're telling the user enter a number. And then we take some CN for, and we save it in value 1. So we take the first number and we clear the buffer. Then we ask for another number. We take the number, clear the buffer, and then we output the value of their number, then a plus sign, then the value of their second number, then an equal sign, and then we output value 1 plus value 2. So this right here shows that we don't have to save the value in another value and then output that value. We can do the math directly in the output statement. So let's take a look at this real quick. Enter a number 6, enter a number 4, 6 plus 4 equals 10. So we can see that it very well does math. So let me add another line. Okay, let me add another line being gonna, gonna be rather lazy because it's gonna be the same line but I'm gonna change some things so copy and paste that I'm gonna change the plus sign to a minus sign and the plus sign to a minus sign so now we're gonna output two equations with two separate values let's have a look at what happens uh, I'll use the same number 6 and 4 6 plus 4 equals 10 6 minus 4 equals 2 so you can see that it does both at the same time there Let's do it again, except this time we're going to add multiplication and division. Use the same numbers 6, 4. 6 plus 4 is 10, 6 minus 4 is 2, 6 times 4 is 24, 6 divided by 4 is 1. So all that checks out except for the last. 1. 6 divided by 4 is 1. That should not be. Do you know why it's 1? Well, I'll just go ahead and tell you. Because our two values, value 1 and value 2, are both integers. So we're doing what is called integer division in this last one. Integer division is where you divide two integers. So an integer can't have decimals, right? 6 divided by 4? a decimal number. One point something, I think it's 1.2, I'm not sure, not quite sure. Um, 
but since we're working with two integers, we're going to end up with an integer. So it just chops off the decimals at the end and gives us just one rather than the whole decimal. So um, if we want to make this available for decimals, we can change the integer type to a different type of variable that accepts ver uh, decimals. So there's a good type here. It's called float. Float gives us floating point values, which would be decimals. Floating point values are decimals. So if we run this again after changing the integers to a float, enter a number just like before, 6, 4. Oh, my bad, it was 1.5. I was close. 6.4 is 10. 6 minus 4 is 2. 6 times 4 is 24. And 6 divided by 4 is 1.5. So now you can see that we have decimals. And if I do this again, I want you to watch this. If I do 6.0 and 4.0, we get the same thing. Just, just want to show you that it does work with decimals in the problem itself. So it works the same. So that is the basic five. Now, the last one I want to show you is the modulus operator. Oops, let me just go ahead and copy paste it. <laughs> modulus operator is represented by a percent sign. Basically, what it does. It divides two numbers. It's, it's just like the division thing, but instead of returning the quotient like the slash operator does, it returns the remainder. What's going on here? Oh. Okay, but uh, it, it's got to work with integers. So, what we do, run it. Enter a number, 6, 4. 6 plus 4 is 10, 6 minus 4 is 2, 6 times 4 is 24, 6 divided by 4 is 1, 6 divided by 2, or sorry, 6 divided by 4 gives us a remainder of 2. So 6 divided by 4 actually is 1.5, but we get a remainder of 2. Now let's check that. 4 goes into 6 how many times? 1, right? So, so we can take away 4 from that. And that gives us 2 left over on my fingers. Unless I counted wrong on my finger, but I'm pretty sure I didn't. So 2 is the correct answer for that. So we have a remainder of 2. So that's how the modulus operator works. Now a good example of using the modulus operator would be as follows. I will go ahead and delete all this crap. Now this program that I also did by the way, all these programs that I show you are available in the text lessons, and all the text lessons are also available for download uh, on my forum. So if you want all this code, you can either just copy it from the uh, video, or you can just go grab it. Uh, I, I would prefer to go grab it. it. It's all saved in a PDF, so I don't know how helpful that would be in copying the code. You'd probably still have to type it, but it'll all still be there with explanations and everything uh, in, saved in a PDF. Now. Let me go ahead and run this. You can see we have an integer called year, and we prompt the, the user to enter a year. We take their input, and then we say if the output is zero, then the year was indeed a leap year. So basically, we're just calculating leap years. So enter the year, uh, let's say 1941. Terrible year. If the output is zero, then the year, year was a leap year. So the output is one, so we have a remainder of one, so it was not a leap year. And the reason we're calculating that is output year modulus 4. So we're dividing the year by 4 and seeing what the remainder is. So if the remainder of dividing the year is 4, or sorry, if, if the remainder is 0 and it and it is, oh my gosh, I can't talk. First I'm going to learn how to speak English, and then I'm going to tell you how to do this. If, if you divide the year by 4 and the remainder is 0, then that means that the year was a multiple of 4 meaning that it's a leap year, since leap years happen every four years. So, let's try 1942. The output is zero. Okay, so we got an output of two. So that's obviously wrong. So since we're heading in that direction, I'm going to go ahead and add two to that, because that'll give us the four. Enter a leap year, 1944. So, output is zero which means that it is a multiple of 4. And if I pull up my calculator here, say 1944, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. 
divided by 4 gives me 486. So it's a whole number. So that means that this was the, was the 486th leap year to happen since year 0. So we do indeed know that it is a leap year. Whereas if we say 1941, like the one we started with, and divide it by 4, we get 0.25. We get a decimal. So that is all I have for you for this lesson. Um, there is another floating point uh, value that, that you need to learn. It's just like float, but it's uh, a different size. Don't really worry about sizes right now. Sizes of variables, you'll get into that later. But uh, float and double. Ooh. Oh my gosh. Float and double. For you at this moment, for all practical purposes, float and double are the same thing. For you at this moment. They're really not, but for all practical purposes, they are. So, so that's all that I have for you right now. Um, just join me again in the next lesson, and I'll teach you about strings.